I got about a thousand Starfield tips I want to share with y'all. So let's get into it. Here's the first one. The value that it says on the item whenever you're looting isn't the value that it's going to sell for. The item's only going to sell for about an eighth of the value. So with this microsecond regulator, the value says it's 212 you just divide that by eight. So it's gonna sell for around 27. Of course, you're not gonna use the calculator every time you go to loot something, but it'll give you a general idea on if the item's even worth looting or not. You wouldn't be worried about the price in this scenario, but you get the point. This regulator leads me to number two. If an item is used for crafting something, it's gonna have a description that says that it's used for crafting. So like this circuit board, is not going to be used for crafting it's just junk i don't recommend looting anything like this it seems tempting in the early game but once you get done with a few missions you'll start to realize how much guns and gear start to sell for that you find when you're looting it's way more than this stuff look let's see like look at the value of this forty-one thousand. then they got just regular weapons like this it's worth fourteen thousand, and it only weighs two pounds or two mass that fourteen thousand makes the value of these circuit boards look like trash this also applies with food items. If it's a food item, it's going to have a description and it's going to tell you what it does at the bottom. This one restores five health. But if we go to my inventory, go to aid, just sort by value emergency kits. It has a description and then it tells you it restores 10% health for five seconds. So not only food items, it also applies to your med kits and your, your other medical items. Basically any usable item will have a description. There are a few exceptions to that, like quest items and digi picks. There probably are a few others, but that's the only ones I could think of right now. Whenever you're looting, you typically want to have the highest value possible for the lowest amount of mass. So for example, the value on this notepad is only three. It only has a 0.01 mass, but that's just not worth looting. Same thing with the notebook. With the microscope, 240 value still really isn't that much but the mass is 2.75, which makes it even worse to loot. So you don't wanna loot stuff like this. The food is a different story because sometimes it's a good food and you're gonna take it regardless. But for junk items, you always wanna to try to get a low mass with a high value. Guns are usually a good example of that. See, this one's two mass, but it's worth 41,000. This one's 0.7 mass, which is really good for 22,000 value. One mass for 5,700, two mass for 7,300. This is the type of stuff that you're gonna wanna pick up. Space suits, on the other hand, I don't think are worth it, unless you find one that's worth 33,000 like this one, but usually they have a value lower than 10,000. And the, if the mass is this much, it's just not worth picking up because the guns are just so much better. I mean, unless you feel like running around encumbered. I think this shotgun right here is probably like the highest mass that I would pick up for this value. If this wasn't a cutter right here, I wouldn't pick this up. If I was just planning to sell this item, I wouldn't pick it up. Here's another useful one that they don't tell you whenever you're playing the game. It says to take it. If you press E, you take it. But if you hold E, it'll actually pick it up. For console, this is whatever your loot button is. Now to throw it or drop it, you can like sling your camera and press E and it'll throw it. Or you can sling your camera and press your reload button. R for PC, I don't know what it is for console. Probably X for Xbox and square for PlayStation. But press your reload button after you sling it and it'll throw it. Pretty neat. So when it comes to gear, rather it's your booster pack, or your spacesuit or your helmet. For me personally, I don't even look at the physical, the energy and the electromagnetic protection. And I don't look at the thermal, the airborne, the corrosive or the radiation. All I pretty much look at is the effects that each item has. Now, because I like carrying around a ton of resources, usually I'm looking for resource type stats on my gear. This one has resource hauler. Resources weigh 25% less. And then assisted carry drain 75% less O2 when running while encumbered. These two on one piece of gear is pretty damn good. I haven't found one that has all three looter buffs, but I think this one's pretty solid. But yeah, you could look at this if you want. That's up to you. But for me personally, I'm only looking at those bottom stats. See, my helmet also has resource hauler. And then my spacesuit has weapon holsters. Weapons weigh 50% less and it has mechanized, which 
is plus 40 carry capacity. It's definitely different for the weapons. I usually just equip it and test it out because it's it's hard to tell if the weapon is going to be good or not by just looking at the stats. Like this one does 109 physical, but the fire rate is 17. This fire rate is 67, but it only does 36 physical. So it's it's kind of hard to just tell if a weapon's good by looking at this. And the, uh, the effects are a huge bonus, but they're not necessarily needed like I'm using this white weapon or multiple white weapons actually. Here's another solid one. Whenever you're doing pretty much anything, just constantly press quick save. On PC, it's F5. All you gotta do is press F5 and it quick save for you. For console, you could just literally press start and click quick save and it'll just save it for you. This will save you a lot of time in the long run. So watch, I'm gonna load this game. This is why, this is a prime example of why you save it. So I turn this corner, boom. I'm getting shot at. This is supposed to be a stealth mission. So I just lo reload the game again. And now I know there's a bot right there. So I hop down in this. Okay, I gotta hop in the vent without letting them see me. Or I could just go back this way. And now I could come back out now that he's turned around. He's going back the other way. Uh, hop in the vent. A lot of people call this save scumming, but play the game how you want to play the game. If you want to do it, do it. If you want to just take the death or the penalties for getting caught, then play that way. So you actually don't have to favorite your cutter on your weapons wheel or whatever you want to call this. In the beginning, I thought you had to have your cutter on this wheel. But when you press F and go into the scanner mode, it automatically equips your cutter. And then all you have to do is shoot and it'll pull your cutter out. So another thing with your weapons, you're going to want to try to pick weapons with different ammo types. That way, if you run out of ammunition for, let's say, this gun, I have 227 rounds for this gun. I can just swap to this one and I don't have to worry about being out of ammo for this one too. See, I got 15 by 25 shells on this shotgun. Then I got 11 millimeter, 9 by 39 millimeter, 6.5 millimeter, 1.5 KV laser. 0 0.43, 0 0.45, 777, and 43 Ultra Mag. I don't have a single gun on this wheel that has the same ammo type. In the beginning, I was going around looting every food item pretty much. Food items like this one are not worth looting. You're gonna end up with your cargo hold on your ship full of stuff like this. And it's just unnecessary to have, especially if you're not gonna be doing any cooking. Cause some of these items are used for cooking like onions or some of the steaks or whatever. But personally, I don't think cooking's worth it because of the amount of food items that you find whenever you're looting. But if you wanna cook, go for it. So when you first get lock picking, you see how this ring is blue on the outer rim? When you first get lock picking, it's not gonna be blue. But once you get rank two of lock picking, or security I should be calling it, the rings will start turning blue and I'll show you what they do. Rings now turn blue when the pick can be slotted. So you see how the outer ring is blue on this one? On the next one, both rings are blue. That means that, means that these two keys can be slotted on both the center one and the outer one. So for this one, being that it's white, on on the outside you can't use this one on the outside you can only use it on the inside because the inside is blue this pretty much just helps you unlock the lock quicker so i know it's going to be so i know it's going to be these first two and then i just line it up if you want to you can line them both up make sure they work before you press e on it or before you uh slot the key then boom and for the next one line them up boom boom easy shitty loot but easy so since i'm about to take this photo in game i'm gonna go ahead and give you all a tip on the photo mode that they have in starfield so when you pull out your scanner you press v and go into photo mode the reason i'm about to take this picture is because this company's logo looks pretty damn similar to my logo thought it was pretty cool but the tip is whenever you take pictures in photo mode in game it actually uses the pictures that you take for your loading screens if you haven't messed around with the photo mode in this game you should definitely check it out they got some cool stuff on it we're gonna go over a few tips that you can use when you're on your ship if you're piloting your ship and you need something out of the cargo hold or you're trying to put something in the cargo hold you can press tab and go to this bottom left category that says ship and then if you press f you look at the bottom of the screen where it says cargo hold you can click on that 
Now you can see the items in your cargo hold and either grab what you want from the cargo hold or you can press Q or click down here and go to your inventory and you can store stuff from your inventory. See, so you store all resources right here. Boom. You can access it even from outside of your ship as long as you're in a 250 meter radius. So let me uh, get off the ship real quick. Here we are. So that's my ship right out there. Press tab to open up the little wheel. And in the bottom left, you're gonna see the ship category. Go ahead and click that. Then you could look at the bottom and it'll tell you what button to press. And then you could take shit out of your cargo hold or put anything up into your cargo hold. The cargo hold isn't your only storage container on the ship. So here's my cargo hold. It's got a ton of stuff in it. But they also have a captain's locker that has 40 mass. The amount of mass on each cargo hold might be slightly different. And I usually put items in this captain's locker that I don't plan on selling and don't want mixed in with my other loot. Has to be a light just because the amount of mass is pretty low. But it's a good little side sword. If you don't want to accidentally sell any of the items, you can separate it, put it in the captain's locker. You can also do that with uh, your ship's armory. If you have armories, you can put weapons or spacesuits on display and it won't be mixed in your cargo hold. That way you won't accidentally sell them and it just looks better. You get to display them on your ship. The only problem with the captain's locker and the armory is that if you change anything on your ship, you upgrade it in any way, go into the ship builder, it will literally take every random item that you have around your ship, even the ones that come on your ship like look all these items all these random items that it puts on your ship it all gets shoved into your cargo hold super annoying so hopefully they fix that pretty soon if you're trying to steal ships and take them as your own having targeting control systems is essential once you have this you can lock onto your target and destroy specific parts of their ship so i can target the engines specifically destroy their engines which makes them not able to move anywhere and then I, it's easier to go up to them and then i can board their ship and take it over so targeting control systems is really good to have you only need rank one of it also to be able to do this I don't even have the other three ranks. So something for ships that they don't explain. Whenever you're looking at habs, when you're building ships, we're gonna go into the ship builder. If you hover over one of the habs, you'll see all these lines at the bottom. That means there's multiple variants of that hab. This one's called the all-in-one berth, and this one has a cooking station, and it gives you two passenger slots. This next one's the armory. The armories are the habs that are gonna be able to hold all your different weapons and stuff, and your packs. It has multiple different weapon cases. I don't have anything in these. A helmet display, another weapon case. You don't really need ammo cases because you can hold an infinite amount of it pretty much. A weapon rack, another weapon rack, another weapon rack, storage box, has 10 masks, can't really put too much in there. Another weapons case, it's pretty insane. And then they got the two uh, spacesuit displays. And then the captain's quarters, pretty much just has a bed and a storage crate that has 150 masks. This is pretty much what it's gonna look like. Um, there's different versions of it, but this will give you the, an idea of what it's gonna be like. Then you got the science lab, and the science lab has a pharmaceutical lab that you can use, a research lab, and a galley. So if you're trying to get those in your ship, you're gonna wanna use the science lab. And then the workshop. If you want the spacesuit workbench, the weapon workbench and the industrial workbench. And I'm pretty sure there's a research lab somewhere. Let's see, I don't see the research lab. Pretty sure my last ship had a research lab in it. There's magazines that you can find throughout the game that give you permanent buffs on just a bunch of random different stats. You can find them in friendly areas too. So don't just pass it up because it's a friendly zone. But look at these stats. Permanently reduce 5% fall damage. Permanently use 15% less O2 while moving when over encumbered. That one's really good. Reload and draw weapons 5% faster. Store prices are permanently reduced by 2% and you permanently sell items for 2% more on top of any other bonuses. So that one's really good. Your ship cargo hold can hold 5% more. Increases your carrying capacity by five kilograms. 
So I saw this tip on Swanee Plays Games YouTube channel, and I thought it was pretty useful, so I'm gonna share it with y'all. If you accidentally shoot an NPC that's a friendly, you can holster your weapon by holding R after accidentally shooting somebody, and it'll make them stop attacking you. I know we you they stopped attacking me, but now she's gonna try to give me a bounty. So I'm gonna reload before she talks to me. But yeah, not not all of them will give you a bounty immediately. That's just happening in this specific situation. So holstering your weapon can be useful. Another tip, if you're standing behind a wall or something for cover, if you get next to the edge and you aim in, it'll pull you from behind the whatever you're standing behind to until you're done aiming once you let go of the aim it puts you back behind let me show you with a different weapon that doesn't have a scope see that could be pretty useful it works on like short surfaces too that you can hide behind like this one for example hiding behind it i'm just pressing aim and it's pulling me up and when i let go it puts me back behind the surface pretty neat so I actually got this next tip from the Legacy Gaming YouTube channel. Each companion will give you random gifts every once in a while. And each different companion has set items that it'll give to you. So for example, let's see. Do you have anything for me? Yeah, so she gave me credits. But Andrea gives credits. Barrett will give you food items. Sam gives you inorganic resources. I'm not sure what the rest give you, but you get the idea. They all give you different stuff. I like Andrea's because it's credits and who doesn't like some extra cash. Another one is if you go to your, your ship category and then you click crew, you can see your different crew's stats. And if you're going to be using them as a companion, for example, Sam Co. Sam Co is good with rifles. So you're going to want to give him rifles as a weapon. If you didn't know, you could go up to your companion, press let's trade gear, and then I'm going to give her a weapon. So trade her that, go back to her. And then you press B to equip it to her. It takes 27 caliber. I need to give her some ammunition. 27. Just give her like 50 or so. And that's how you equip weapons to your companion. You could do the same thing with the gear and the booster packs. You can equip all that to them. And since I'm showing you the uh, how you give them a weapon, your companions are basically walking storage containers. They hold up to 135 mass, which is pretty close to the amount that you can carry so if you start to get full and you're not near your ship just offload everything that you don't need at the moment onto your companion and then once you get back to your ship you can take it back off the only thing with giving loot to your companions is you can't sell items directly from their inventory so if you want to sell some stuff you're gonna have to grab all the loot back off your companion put it in your inventory in order to sell it so this one's more of a cosmetic tip but you see how my character is not wearing a spacesuit i mean it kind of looks like it could be a spacesuit but Anyway, it's not, but I do have the spacesuit equipped it. If you are in a settlement, you can actually make it to where your spacesuit will be hidden whenever you're in settlements. You're just gonna go to your inventory and click on the spacesuit. And at the bottom, you'll see it right here. Show spacesuit in settlements. So if I turn it on, then it'll show this spacesuit while I'm in a settlement, but I don't want it on. So I'm gonna hide it. And instead of seeing this, I look like this, cause that's my apparel. I got the operative the operative suit and the operative helmet. You can do the same thing with your helmet too. So at the bottom, you're just going to go to helmets in your inventory. And at the bottom, you'll see show helmet in breathable areas. Or if you're trying to hide it, it'll say at the bottom, hide helmet in breathable areas. Another little tip whenever you're going to build your ship, I suggest putting your landing bay in the front of your ship. Because in the last build that I did, I put it on the back side. It was back here. And... Every time I landed on the uh, landing pad, I had to walk around from the back side of the ship. It's not bad if you only had to do it once or twice, but like walking from the back side of the ship every time you get to a city it just starts to get old, especially if you're encumbered. So I would definitely put it on the front of the ship if you don't want to do a whole bunch of extra walking or running. So another thing with these ship parts, each different city you go to actually has different ship parts that you can get for your ship. You're not going to be able to see all of these ship parts at one city. Each city has different manufacturers. You see how this one's manufactured by Ballistic Solutions. This is Dogstar, Hope Tech, Nova Galactic. Anyway, 
Each city has different manufacturers that offer different ship parts. So if you can't find something you need at one city, try going to another one. And from what I hear, if you have a landing pad at any of your outposts, you're able to see every ship part. I'm not 100% on that one, so take that with a grain of salt, but uh, that is what I heard. So whenever you steal a ship and add it to your fleet, the ship originally comes unregistered. These are some of the ships that the vendor's selling, but it's the same thing whenever you steal one, it's gonna come unregistered. Whenever you're in your ship viewer, you gotta talk to a ship technician. This is where you will register the stolen ships. So like you see how at the bottom right here, it says registered. There'll be a button down here that'll say register ship or something like that. And that's how you're able to register the ships. Without registering them, you're not able to make any changes to them. And usually the register cost is only a few thousand less than the cost of the ship so like you see this ship value is ten thousand to register this one i probably paid eight thousand or so so there's not much profit to be made from stealing ships unfortunately so this one's more for people that haven't really messed with the ship building but you see the amount of points you're able to distribute into each of these categories this number increases by getting better reactors it increases the maximum amount of points that you can use at one time but you can only have one reactor at a time and since we're talking about ship parts and all that if you want to be able to build the badass ships that go super fast have a ton of weapons have a ton of cargo on them the only way to do that is upgrading piloting in the tech tree so once you get piloting to rank three you're able to pilot class b ships once you hit rank four you're able to pilot the class c ships and then on top of piloting they have another one called starship design that gives you better ship modules so it allows the installation of improved ship modules, superior ship modules, cutting edge ship modules, and then experimental ship modules. Another thing with piloting, sometimes you'll find like park ships just chilling on a planet somewhere. And if you're not able to fly class B or class C ships and it's a class B or a class C ship, you're just going to have to basically leave the, leave the ship behind. It sucks to have to look at something that you know you could have, but you don't have because you didn't level up piloting. I definitely recommend working on this pretty early because the challenge to progress it is destroying ships and that could take a while unless you're just focusing on it. So if you have contraband that you're trying to get rid of because you can't take it to a major city, there is places that you can sell it without having to go through the scanners. For example, in the Crick system, there's a station called the Key that you could sell contraband to. There is a spot in every major city that you can also sell contraband to called the Trade Authority. But in order to get to those cities, you're going to have to go through scanners. So I usually just use the key to sell to sell to. And there's a ton of vendors at the key and they all have decent amount of money. So for example, this is the weapons vendor on the key. She only has 4,500, but there's an another one right next to her. This dude has 5,000. Then we got the general goods, 3,500. Then we have Zuri's essentials. And then we have the trade authority right here which is the, the place I was talking about that you can sell contraband to in every major city. And this dude has 11,000 credits. So that's a decent amount of credits that you can sell in between. Another thing about the key, the general goods vendor on the key has a ton of different resources and not just like regular resources. Like, look, this is a unique resource, exotics, rares, exotics, uniques, all kind of different stuff that you might need. Look at this. That is a ton of stuff. So yeah, if you need some resources, use the general goods vendor on the key. I'm pretty sure they have these resource vendors in, in all the major cities too. I know they have one in Achille, and I'm pretty sure they have one in Neon too. I don't know about New Atlantis. The thing about the, the key is that all of these vendors will accept contraband. Whereas if you were in a major city, only the trade authority would accept contraband. Since we're talking about contraband, I'm going to show you something in the ship builder real quick. So if you get the Mantis ship or if you find a vendor that sells these, you can get shielded cargo for your ship, which if you see the description, spaceship cargo modules increase your ship's inventory space. 
shielded cargo will hide contraband from the authorities. What this does is when you go past the scanners, it gives you a percent chance to not get caught. So when I'm pulling up to one of the major cities planets, I'll start flying towards it and it'll tell me I have like a 60 or 70% chance to get past the scanners. And if they catch you, then they're going to arrest you or attack you. And of course, if you do, you're going to just be able to go into the city. But at the key, it looks like they sell the shielded cargo without needing any starship designs or piloting. There's also something for your ship that can block the scanners from seeing the contraband on your ship. They got the scan jammer single frequency, dual frequency, and multi-frequency. The multi-frequency you need starship design rank 2, the dual is rank 1, and the single one you don't need starship design for. So if you're looking for a scan jammer, they definitely have them at the key. The description for it increases your chance of evasion during a ship scan by 10% if you're using a shielded cargo model module and carrying contraband so you still have to have the shielded cargo module but this will increase your percent chance of getting away even more and the starship design rank one will increase the chance by 30 percent and then the multi frequency that you get when you get starship design rank two is 50 percent now if you don't think your percentage is high enough to get past the scanners all you have to do is quick save right before they scan you and if you fail and they try to kill you or arrest you you just reload load to right before it happened i know a lot of people don't like save scumming or whatever they call it but you can play the game however you want to play if you don't want to play like that don't so i'm going to talk about a few things at the vendor real quick i'm going to go to the trade authority so open up a move. trade so the first thing you could switch to sell but you can actually sell from your ship's inventory too your cargo hold you just click sell from ship inventory this way you don't have to unload your ship to come vendor stuff you could store everything in your cargo hold and then when you're ready to sell you can sell everything from your cargo hold another thing when you're selling misc items so you see how it puts your digi picks in here your digi picks are pretty much the only misc item that you don't want to sell i mean unless you're just collecting stuff like this is a antique toy motorcycle you can use stuff like this for decoration or whatever but there, there's no like actual use for it so in order to prevent yourself from accidentally selling selling your digi picks you can come down to the bottom and then sort it by weight your digi picks weigh 0, 0.00 so it'll put everything that you need to sell above the digi picks because it would really suck for you to sell your digi picks and then not be able to get into a lock because of it another thing i like doing when i'm vendoring stuff if i'm limited on mass and i'm just trying to sell as much mass as i can with the amount of vendor credits you sort by value and then go to the bottom and sell all of the cheaper stuff first that way you can get rid of more mass and it will take less credits now you might want to check some of the masses like this one's only 0.43 that's a pound right there that's 0 0.5 1.6 1 1.8 you're gonna want to look at the mass but sort by value makes it easier to get rid of the stuff that is taking up the most weight at the least amount of value here's another good tip whenever you go to vendors always check their misc and buy the digi picks because there's a lot of things that you can unlock with digi picks in this game and there is a chance that you'll run out if you're not buying them. and plus they're cheap anyway so and a tip with the buyback once you leave the vendor's inventory you can't buy back items for the price you sold them for so like for this for example black market antiquities is i could buy it back right here for 14.35 now let me leave the inventory and go back to them see now the buyback isn't there and if i try to buy it back it's now 11,000. so make sure if you accidentally sell something to a vendor that you don't leave the trade window otherwise you're gonna have to pay a ton extra to get your item back the only other thing i really buy from vendors is either resources that i need for crafting ammunition that i'm short on i usually have a ton of ammo but like some of them i'll still run out like one 1.5 kv is one of them that i'll run out a decent amount all right this isn't really a tip but i wanted to show you all this real quick don't ask me why the hell i did it but i've almost collected every single playing card in a deck i've literally just been collecting them and selling all the duplicates and i have every single 
single card except for the queen of spades so if you feel like earning your time for no reason whatsoever try to try to get the complete deck of cards all right so here's some stolen resources right here so i'm gonna sell these to to the vendor i'm gonna go back to buy back and then i'm gonna buy all these back now when i go back to my inventory they're not stolen anymore so if you're just trying to get rid of this that stolen marker you can literally sell them to the vendor and buy them back for the same price and then they're not stolen anymore pretty neat which i have a ton of stolen materials and stuff i'm not really worried about it you can have stolen items on you as long as nobody sees you stealing the item contraband's a different story but you won't get in trouble for having stolen loot on you if you're looking for resources and you don't feel like going around like harvesting everything just about every single one of these ships besides like the gale bank ones you can actually trade with look i'm gonna hail them let's trade so a lot of these have extra resources that they sell and they have vendor credits so you could sell to them a good amount of these ships actually have ship parts uc rambler let's trade see this ship has 2000 credits and 11 resources it's not just like common resources either that's an exotic exotic rare uncommon exotic 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 some of these resources would be hard to get otherwise so check these ships if you can't find a specific resource let's go to new atlantis so once you're in new atlantis i got the ship technician right here and then there's a little trade authority kiosk right next to him this isn't where you can sell the contraband it's there's another spot there's an actual vendor for the trade authority that you can sell the contraband to but you can sell a decent amount of items here see the vendor credits for this is five thousand i don't really need to sell anything but i'm going to show you something real quick i'm going to just sell some of this ammo i got 32,000 of it i'll be all right i'm going to sell 200 of it 211 for 844 so you see how the vendor credits went down the kiosk is at 4156 just imagine that it was at zero and you still have items that you're trying to sell you go back on your ship and then you're gonna go to a bed and sleep if you sleep for 24 hours now that it's been 24 hours get back off my ship and go back up to the kiosk and now when i sell to the kiosk the vendor has 5,000 credits again so that's how you refresh the vendor's credits you just sleep now if it's an actual vendor this is important if it's an actual vendor it's going to take 48 hours to reset the vendor's credits for the kiosk it's only 24 so just make sure that you're sleeping 48 hours if you're trying to reset a vendor and since we're talking about sleeping i'm gonna go ahead and talk about this too if you open your little character menu and you click status down here it's going to be b on computer and look at the status effects see i'm well rested it gives you a 10 percent xp buff for around 25 minutes after you sleep and you can do this all you have to do is sleep one hour and you'll get the the same well rested buff for around 25 minutes plus 10 percent xp now not only that so this food right here i'm not even going to try to pronounce that but you see it gives plus two percent xp gain for 60 minutes i can actually eat this and go back to the little character screen go to status again now look i still have my well rested buff for 10 percent xp gain and i have the two percent xp gain for 60 minutes so you can get the, the well rested xp buff and use a xp buff from food so that's an extra 12 percent xp that you could be getting non-stop and it's easy to get these xp foods the 60 minute ones are a little bit harder to get but i literally just used it to show y'all in this video so it is, i don't care about them that much they're pretty easy to find if you don't have any of those you can craft tranquil teas i'm pretty sure you can craft these without even you don't have to have gastronomy or anything you could just craft these right out of the gate and if it's not these these give you a uh, two percent xp gain for 15 minutes but if it's not these that you can craft it's uh okay here it is these alien teas the regular ones or the boba both of them will give you 15 minutes of two percent xp gain the boba just gives you uh plus 10 oxygen for five minutes on top of that this one doesn't but yeah these are pretty easy to make come up here to the galley it's right here it only requires one fiber and one distilled water you could find fibers really easy to get and distilled water you can also get really easy from just looting i don't have any right now because i sold all the ingredients for cooking stuff you find so much while you're looting it's not really necessary in my opinion but yeah that's pretty neat i want to go to the lodge to show y'all something real quick and you could actually travel straight to it even if you're already at new atlantis you just hover over the icon and the lodge will pop up 
if you've already been there. I'm just gonna quick travel to it and it puts you right in front of the lodge. Go in the lodge. Now if you come downstairs once you get into the lodge. So this is the main entrance of the lodge. This is the constellation headquarters. Basically where your main mission, your main quest starts. But if you come downstairs right there by the front entrance and you go through these first few rooms, there's actually a spacesuit down here that you can get once you level up your security enough to be able to unlock these master locks. So security right here in the tech tree, that's what you use for the digi picks, the lock picking. Once you get it to rank three, you can unlock master locks. I don't even, I could get rank four, but I don't really think it's worth it for me. But once you get it to rank three, there's a suit down here. If you come out of that room and walk right in here, there's actually a storage box that has unlimited mass. You could put a ton of stuff in here and you never have to worry about mass. I don't know if there's a limit to this, like how many items can you actually put in this storage box? I'm not sure, but that's crazy. Here's another one. This storage box also has unlimited mass. Now be careful with those storage boxes because I'm not sure if there's anything that you can do that will make the loot in there disappear. But if you want to do some testing with it, you can. Or if anybody knows in the comment section, let me know. And here's another one down here that has unlimited. Here's another one in this room upstairs in the constellation building. What you're looking for is these lines on the mass. When you're going through the cities, look for some of the NPCs that have names. Like it's not going to be any of these that are named citizen. A lot of times you can either find side missions from them, like the one I just got, Jim Jealousy. You can hire some of them as crew members. I'm gonna go through the little dialogue. I can pay 13,500 to recruit her or I can persuade her to try to get the price down. Let's see, I'm gonna just go for the four right out of the gate. No, uh, let's try the three. No, try the three again. Okay, and then the one. Hey, there we go. So it was 13,500 at first. Now it's only 67.50, so it's half the price. I'm gonna go ahead and hire. I'll just put her on an outpost. And that's how you find more crew members. There's tons of them in the major cities. You can find them in other places too, but there's a decent amount of them that'll be easier to find in major cities. So if you chose the dream home trait, I'm not gonna show the house cause I don't wanna ruin anybody's experience, but you don't actually have to pay the, the mortgage every week or every month, whatever. You literally only have to pay it whenever you go to the house. Like I'm right next to the house right now and I won't have to pay it unless I wanna enter the house and it's like 5,000 whenever you go. Or you can just pay the whole thing in full, but why would you? I didn't really find the dream home trait too valuable. I, I think I literally used the house like once, but if you're just trying to like camp out a house for the fun of it, then dream home's pretty cool. So something that they don't tell you about the cutter, whenever I was using the cutter, I was just holding left on the resources whenever I was harvesting. But if watch, watch the crosshairs when I aim with the cutter, the lines go to the center. Now watch, watch how much faster this gets harvested done done so i want to show you something with the uh with your oxygen so you know whenever you run your oxygen starts depleting once the white bar runs out your co2 starts increasing it's the red bar the bottom left and once it maxes out you'll start taking damage but it's really not a big deal if you just continue to run while the red bar is full it'll only go down to 10 percent at the lowest and then once you get to wherever you're trying to get to you can med kit or whatever you need to do so like i have buku med kits i, I won't be running out anytime soon see i got 37 med kits 20 trauma kits three emergency kits if if you have extra med kits and trauma kits and you don't mind taking the extra damage from the co2 just let it do damage to you now it kind of stops you from running but what i'm saying is you can move with the red bar and it's not gonna kill you as long as you don't get shot when you're at 10 percent or something like that another tip you see these icons on these different systems we'll click on this one cheyenne this icon means that there's an outpost there so let's see for this one it's the clinic for this one it's sedonia for this one over here it's new homestead this one over here it's a civilian outpost that's what that little icon right there means it means there's a npc outpost there now this icon right here means that you have an outpost on that planet so go to this see i have an outpost right here i have an outpost right here in groombridge uh, that's an outpost and then this other icon up here bradbury i got an outpost over here and over here actually that should help you find your outpost after you build them on whatever planet or 
moon and also help you find the major cities if you're still learning all the systems and stuff so i thought this was pretty cool you usually only find like stuff like iron from them but you do find other resources so all of these asteroids are actually harvestable if you shoot them see i destroyed it there's a loot right there i'm gonna fly towards it you could loot it once you're at 500 meters see look eight iron let's shoot the next one shoot this one let's see what they gave us seven iron look gave us some platinum nine iron and four platinum it's a really quick way to get iron but yeah asteroids are harvestable i'm gonna show you something at the outpost real quick so this is one of my outposts i want to show you this real quick for any items any structures that you build on your outpost if you delete it it gives you a hundred percent of the resources back so don't worry about accidentally building something and you not being able to get the resources back or you don't like where you placed it you can get a hundred percent of the resources back anytime you delete an item while you're at your outpost you can also randomly get attacked by pirates so be on the lookout for that i made a video on the character traits and the character backgrounds and why i think certain ones aren't worth picking and which ones i would pick if you want to check out that video i'll leave a link to that one on the screen hope to see y'all in the next one peace